All right, so let's get into keys to victory for Notre Dame. So we're going to begin with the Navy offense, the keys for the Notre Dame defense against the Navy offense. And I write an article every year. I didn't do it this year because I just – I've already got it on the site, and we'll talk about it in the show because it doesn't change. But essentially for Notre Dame's defense, there are, to me, six keys to stopping Navy. And and the sixth one and the first one are, are very similar. Uh, but number one, be disciplined, be diverse, and be disruptive. It, essentially this is what that means. Number one, you have to be disciplined. You cannot freelance against Navy. You can't say, well, hey, I'm supposed to take the fullback, but I think the quarterback has the ball. Let me go to him instead because then the fullback's going to be running right up the middle untouched, right? If you have the B gap, you got to hit the B gap and you got to hit the B gap hard. Uh, you have to be diverse. If you just line up in the same defense every day, every play, and every snap, the D tackle has the same job, the DN has the same job, the outside linebacker has the same job, the safety has the same job. Navy will scheme it, and Navy will be able to to make plays. They're going to know where you are. They know they've got all types of plays. So they're going to run the triple option. Obviously, they'll run double option, which is basically faking the fullback dive and pulling and getting outside. Uh, they are going to run dive, which looks like triple option, but it's just dive. They'll run traps. They'll run counters. They'll run counter option. Uh, they will run plays that look like option but aren't. They'll run a tight, like a really just right up the center's behind uh, triple option. They'll run more of an ought, like a mid-zone type of triple option. Uh, and they'll run tosses. They'll run reverse. I mean, they're, they're it's not just one off. If you want to just line up and do one thing, they're going to have plenty of things to do to attack that. So you have to be diverse. And, and diverse doesn't always have to be where you line up. You can have a, some some consistency from a lining up standpoint. But what you have to do within that is you have to be willing to uh, to be diverse from a who has what responsibility kind of thing. And that's going to be a big key uh, to defending this Navy offense. So obviously uh, the, the last part is being disruptive. And I think this is one you know, and then my my sixth key, so I'll just kind of give it now, is you have to attack the Navy option. I think one of the mistakes, one of the mistakes that I think teams make a lot with Navy is they get so afraid of making mistakes and not being assignment correct that they will end up just kind of being passive and and allowing Navy to kind of really get rolling with their fakes and with their reads and those type of things. And that's that's a big mistake against Navy. You cannot do that against Navy. If you are not aggressive and you allow him to ride his fakes out and things like that, then you're, what, what's going to happen to you is, is you're, you're just flat out going to give up big plays. You're just going to get gashed. I mean, it's going to be five yards, five yards, six yards. And then that one time somebody makes a mistake, it's a big play. So you have to be aggressive. And the reason you have to be aggressive is, number one, you don't want to let the lineman get to the second level. That's, that's point number one. The second thing that that is key to being aggressive is you want to speed everything up. So if, if you're a triple option team, what you want to do is you want to be able to stick that ride and you want to ride it all the way out, right? And then if you're going to pull, you want to get outside. You want to carry that option as quickly outside as possible. You want to get to the perimeter and then you want to pitch late on the perimeter and you want to pitch off a DB, right? Because if you're pitching off a DB, a lot of times there's nobody else out there. That's what a triple option team wants to do. They want to they want to really carry those things out. So for you as a defense, you have to be the opposite. You have to speed everything up. And so if he's going to give on to the fullback, you need to tack it hard and you need to make him give to the fullback right now and then everybody can rally to the ball. And they'll a lot of the things they'll do are going to look like triple option, but they're actually fullback dives. So the harder and the more aggressive you are attacking the fullback, the better it's going to be for your uh, for your defense, you know, really, because then you're just hammering them, you're getting to them. That's why disruption is so important, because a lot of times what works for Navy is they're just kind of that fullback just gets behind the offensive lineman and you tackle him and he just gets tackled for a five yard gain, but he's never got past the offensive lineman. So you have to be able to be disruptive in that regards. Keep them at the line of scrimmage as much as possible. The other aspect of it, too, is, is you want to you want to have them pitch the ball and and declare as quickly as possible. It's, and, and look, the, 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 the teams that have been really good at stopping the uh, stopping like the, the really up-tempo spreads, 
that run the ball. So like Chip Kelly back in the day, it's a very similar philosophy. And that's something that Stanford did a great job of. Stanford back when they played Oregon, when they would have success against Oregon, they'd be really aggressive, really attacking. And you force them to make their read and, and get going as quickly as possible. And so then what that does is that forces them to declare this is where the ball is going and then you can rally. It's the same thing against the triple option. So when you're playing the triple option, the faster you can force the quarterback to either hand off or pull and the faster you can get him to pitch, the, the then the further behind the line he is with the ball and the, the faster you can recognize and rally to the football as a defense. So that's why I love aggressive defenses. I hate – now, occasionally you want to kind of mix it up. You know, you want to – if you're speeding up the quarterback's time timing mechanism and he's rushing everything, then occasionally, you know, you may string it out and that's how you can create a big play. But your philosophy overall has to be to really attack it and really be aggressive with it. And I think those are – that is an absolute key to defending the triple option and being disruptive. And, and part of that is, too, is one of my other keys is – and it's it's you have to win on early downs. And that means getting Navy – off schedule. There is not an offense in the country that does a uh, has a harder time with the triple that with with being off schedule than the triple option. This is an offense that likes to go for it on fourth down. This is an offense that wants to to you know get in get you in as many third and shorts as possible. That's how they that's how they run the clock out. If you can create negatives on first and second down, get them in third and longs and take them out of their game. Now, they're still going to run the option on third and long, but it, 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 they'll also at times need to pass. But this is a de- an offense that, t- to me, has been not good at limiting those disruptives. And when they are struggling as an offense, a lot of times it's because of that. So, for example, Navy this year ranks 113th in tackles for loss allowed. And a big part of that is because they also rank 117th in sacks allowed. Their quarterback, I, I'm, let me let me pull up his specific passing numbers, the offense's passing numbers. They've thrown 70, they've attempted 72 passes this year in eight games. They've given up 25 sacks. Navy's allowed their quarterback to get sacked 25 times. That's a ton. That's a ton, especially when you consider how infrequently they pass the football. So this is a, an offense that's been prone to to giving up a lot of those negatives. Now, they haven't it, it hasn't been as bad in recent games, and that's kind of something that's you know last couple games that's allowed them to be better. But when Cincinnati had success against them, when uh, Tulsa had any success against them, it was creating negatives, and that's something that helped Cincinnati really slow that offense down late, is because at, early on they were they were gashing Cincinnati. As the game got further and further, Cincinnati started getting more and more negatives, and that's when you saw uh, Navy have have less success with that. So, if you can if you can create negatives, you're going to be successful. They did that against Cincinnati. Did that kept them under 200 yards. Tulsa did not do that. Tulsa had two tackles for loss for minus four yards, and that's why Navy went over 300 on them, and that's why Navy ended up beating them. So, really. Winning on early downs, creating negatives, creating disruptives, that getting him into into more pass heavy situations is a way to obviously have a lot of success against Navy. Another big part of this is handling cut blocks. Now, rule changes in recent seasons have made it a little harder for Navy to cut the way they have in the past, especially on the perimeter, but they're still going to cut block. And you have to have a plan for that. You have to work on it all week. Uh, Mike Elson has been really good about that in recent seasons as he's seen it more and more and more. It's a lot about technique. It's about coming off hard, but being able, but having your hands ready to fight, whether it's to engage right away or whether it's to push it down. So I think those are things that, that I like to see. You have to handle the cut blocks uh, are, are, are things that I like. So uh, we have a question here from Andrew Goss. Uh, you're supposed to string out, uh, string out the outside option. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that works. I think is if you string it out, then what happens is, is it's like an outside zone play. The more you string it out, the more creases you create in the run lanes, the things that you can do. What I like to do and what I think the best success that teams have had in the past, I mean, for the last 20 years that I've been been covering the triple option, teams that have had the best success at consistently stopping the triple option are teams that attack it. When you watch when triple option teams play each other, they don't string it out. They attack it. And they're really aggressive. And that's why a lot of times those triple option teams 
will have their worst rushing games against each other. And so to me, that's why I look at it and say you have to be aggressive and you have to attack it. Now, you don't want to get out leveraged. That's a big thing. And that's my next key is don't get out leveraged. You cannot get out leveraged against Navy. Now, what Navy is going to do is they're going to use a lot of different formations and motions to try to get you out leveraged. Out leveraged essentially means what Navy wants to do is they want to get their your edge players and your and your alley players. So like your rover, if your safety comes down, your will linebacker, your viper, they want to get blockers outside of them to down block. So they're going to try to pin Isaiah Foskey and pin Myron Tungvaloa. They're going to try to pin the outside linebacker, whoever that may be. Uh, they're going to try to pin you down and they get outside of you with their option, with their pitch, and with their passes. And so if you allow them to out-leverage you to the outside, then you're going to have some problems. And that's something that Navy likes to do. And I think one of the misconceptions that people have about a triple option offense is that it's always the triple option. There are times you will break Navy down, and if you really understand their offense, you'll look at it and say, they probably only ran triple option 20% of the snaps. Like a pure triple option they were reading out. Now it looks like they're running a lot of triple option. But in reality, it's just a dive or it's uh, the dive is nothing more than a fake. Um, and, and at times it'll look like it's a triple option, but it's really a quarterback run. So you have to really be prepared. But I think that when you look at how to defend it is if you can handle leverage without then being so afraid of being out leveraged that you just let them gash you right up the middle with the fullback and the quarterback. I think that's a key to being successful. So uh, part of it also. So is properly playing blocks. You cannot go under blocks if you're on the perimeter. If you go under blocks, they will get outside of you and they will get big plays. And then to me, the final key, because again, I, I talked about key number six with the first one, which is attack it. The final one is to control the middle of the, of the line scrimmage. If you can ha if you can control the middle of the line, then you're, you're going to slow Navy down. Because at the end of the day, the two keys to their offense are the quarterback and the fullback. Those are the two weapons. When their fullback really gets rolling, that's when they have success. And if you're a defense, that's one of the kind of things that you have to be able to, to, uh, to take away. If you can take the fullback away and make the fullback less productive, you have a great, great chance at slowing down the triple option. And we've seen that in past years when Notre Dame has gotten beat by the triple option. A lot of times it's because they gash them with the fullback. It's not, it's not Keenan Reynolds. It's not, you know, uh, it wasn't Ricky Dobbs. It wasn't Keen, It wasn't Malcolm Perry. It was the fullback. And if you don't stop the fullback, you're you're going to have a tougher time. Cincinnati did a bad job of bad job of stopping the fullback, and UCF did a bad job of stopping the fullback. Notre Dame can't can't allow that to happen. So they have to be able to, and that comes down to controlling the middle line of scrimmage. If you beat their guards and center all game long, they op, the triple option offense, the Navy offense will not work. And that's going to be a big key to the Notre Dame defense stopping the Navy, the Navy uh, offense. And, and of course, there's the, 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 key, the keys that are every game, right? Uh, be disciplined, right? Don't give up big plays. I've seen Navy – run a flea flicker this year. They ran a flea flicker. I was, I think it was SMU. They ran a flea flicker. I, I handed dive, fullback dive and flea. I'd never, I don't know if I've ever seen Navy run a flea flicker. They're going to run reverses. They're going to run all types of things. And and it was successful against Cincinnati because Cincinnati played a lot of man. I think this is a game where maybe you might want to play more zone on the back end to not allow them to get you running and then bring something behind it. But you obviously have to be disciplined, but that's true of every game. You know, discipline isn't, you know, it, it's, and I talked earlier about being disciplined within the context of the defense, you know, this is your job, but there's also the discipline of being able to read out plays and, and not over pursue and not take bad angles and, you know, have good technique and those type of things. That's a different type of discipline that is also important, but that's more important in every game. Uh, that's important every game, and so it's really no to me no different this week. Before we move on to the keys for the Notre Dame, uh, the Notre Dame offense against the Navy defense, we do have a super chat from Alberto. Hola, amigo. Is this your second Euro super chat? Keep up the great work. Here's hoping to no injuries. It is the second super chat, although we've only had one person do it, and that would be you. So we certainly appreciate that. We appreciate you being part of our show, and uh, I believe you said you are from Spain. So we've got Notre Dame fans all over. The country. So we appreciate you very, 
very much. So let's get into the keys to success for the Notre Dame offense. And I got them written down here. To me, it's, first of all, one of the greatest assets for the Notre Dame defense is when its offense comes out and scores early. When you look at the Notre Dame-Navy game in 2019, that was one of the best Navy teams that Notre Dame has played since Brian Kelly took over. And Notre Dame absolutely dominated Navy that day. They were, that was an 11-win Navy team. And Notre Dame jumped all over them and blew them out 52-20. to 20, And it wasn't that close. Uh, Navy scored the last three, three, three times. It was 50. It was at one point in time, it was 45 to 10. Uh, Notre Dame had just, it was no, Scar, it was 45 to three at one point in time. And then Navy poured on some points in the second half, uh, scored seven in the third, 10 in the fourth in like garbage time. And then of course, Notre Dame had put had, their final score was Paul Moala uh, picking up, basically intercepted a pitch and taking it back to the house. But the reason why is Notre Dame jumped on Nate early. First play, first drive of the game, two plays, 73 yards. Second drive of the game, uh, or excuse me, first scoring drive of the game for Notre Dame went 10, 11 plays, 75 yards, first drive. Notre Dame goes down and scores. Navy goes on a long drive of their own, takes six minutes. Notre Dame, I think it was Khalid Kareem, forces a fumble. Notre Dame gets it, two plays, 75-yard touchdown. Navy goes gets the ball again. Notre Dame forces a turnover. Four plays, 39 yards, 21 nothing. Game is over at that point in time. Quick three and out. They get the ball back. Post route to Braden Lindsey, 28 nothing in the second quarter. I mean, it it was over. Because at that point in time, Navy was completely out of what they wanted to do. Now, if they want to go on a 12-play drive that takes eight minutes off the clock, fine. I don't care. You're up 28 nothing. You're up 21 nothing or 24 to nothing. Those are the keys. So you have to score early. You have to score often. That puts Navy in a serious bind. They want a low-scoring control the clock kind of game. That's what Navy wants to do. And so offensively, you have to come out and you have to be you have to be aggressive, but you also have to be controlled. And that's another part of this too is, you know, one of the things they want to do is Navy wants to try to get you into playing their game. They want you to play ball control. They're going to give you certain things. And on early downs, those things are important. You hey, look, take a first and 10 six yard hitch route on an RPO or a five yard outcut if they're giving that to you, because eventually they're going to have, someone's going to make a play, right? Somebody's going to make somebody miss and make a play, but it's just take those things. But at the same time, it's going to be imperative that, that Tommy Reese also find ways to create big plays. And that's something Chip Long did a great job of in 2019. You had the, the one of the best calls he made that year, put Chase Claypool in the slot. You get Navy kind of playing in their zone and you just attack him right down the scene with Chase Claypool for a touchdown. And that was a huge game from Chase Claypool. You Then later you get Braden Lindsay over the top on a post route for a touchdown. So there are things you can do schematically with screens. There's things you can do with your quick game, but you know, there's things you can do with deep shots and there's things you can do in the running game to create big plays. Notre Dame's going to have to try to create some big plays, but not forcing big plays down the throat. And I think that's something that Cincinnati struggled with is Cincinnati was always looking to kind of hit big plays and, and that allowed the pressures that since that Navy likes to bring to kind of rattle Desmond Ritter because it was all a lot of just deep shots. And then he tried to force downfield throws and that got him in trouble. And he was off target a lot in that game. So Jack Cohn has to be sharp. You know, if you get those opportunities over the middle of the field, you, you got to hit them, hit the seams, hit the crossing routes, hit the backside seam. Those shots are going to be there. Take them. If there's a deep shot, just let it rip. Throw it as far as you can. Let your receivers run underneath it. I think that's going to be a big part of this game as well. So there are going to be opportunities for big plays, and you've got to hit those big plays. Uh, so win up front is going to be key. Navy's undersized. You have to push them off the ball. If you can't push Navy off the ball, you've got a big, big problem on offense. And then the other thing, too, is just be smart and don't turn the ball over. The, the last thing you can you need to do against Navy is, is, is have dumb things that give them the ball. Fumbles interceptions, you know, drop passes on third down, second down, or in, any down that then lead to, to punts and things like that. Those are the kind of mistakes that will get you beat. And those are the kind of things that Notre Dame has to completely avoid. If they can do that, this offense should score a lot on Navy. Cincinnati's not a great offense. I've been saying it all year. They're just not. Notre Dame made them look better than they are. They had a plenty of chances to score more. They had drop passes. They had just dumb penalties. They had – 
you know, turning guys loose, Desmond Ritter missing open receivers. It was a sloppy, sloppy game, and they still scored 27 points on Navy and, and came back to win despite really playing poor football in that game, which just kind of shows it's it's Navy's just not a – Navy's not a real good – team you can play a really bad game and, and still beat them and and people talk about it was it was a competitive game it was in the first half the second half Cincinnati controlled that game uh, pretty easily uh, they had I think it's 27 13 Navy scored late and that's kind of what made it a, a little closer game than it seemed but uh, and Cincinnati didn't play bad they had 271 yards of offense just really had a, a bad game you have to Notre Dame can needs to be better than that, and they can be better than that. But you have to have a good game plan, and you have to execute it. That requires the quarterback to be smart, be accurate, and it requires the offensive line to be on top of their game. 